on your feet, and we'll give God some praise. Have you had a glorious time fasting unto the Lord? It's been a great 21 days for me. 
And uh, I know for many of you have heard good reports of what God's doing in your life, and we're just uh, thank, thankful to God that we're able to draw near to Him. We pray that God will bless today. We're having our annual business meeting in just a little bit. That's why the service will be uh, not quite as long. I won't be preaching as long and trying to get started a little after 11. And uh, people will say that's the greatest challenge I've ever had in my life, but we're going to get through it. Uh, but uh, we're excited to have all of you with us today, and uh, we're excited for the meeting that's coming. God is good, and we're praising the Lord for that. Yes. Yes, we just found that Rich shared that with me, and we need to pray for this uh, little girl that uh, God would help her. It's a, she needs a miracle with MS, but we know God's a God of working miracles, amen. Others' families are sick, going through a tough time, and we want to pray for them this morning too. And uh, some are not with us today. The Santonis are very sick, little Kaylee sick. We need to pray for them. Alan Steinman, uh, they called late last night. He's been vomiting and, and not well, so keep up, Alan. He's very weak from the cancer that he's been going through, and they ask us to pray too. And good to have Jerry with us and today, and uh, he's just been going through so much and not been well, but it's good to see you again, to Jerry, this morning. God bless. Let's just pray. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you, that you're the God above all gods, and that, Lord, nothing is impossible for you. We pray you'd reach into every home and every life this morning that's been mentioned to you this morning that needs prayer, that needs a touch, especially the Santoni family, God, and the Steinman family. Continue to heal them and help them. And this little girl that's been diagnosed with MS, Lord, we pray that you would bring healing and help to her. You see all that this family's been put through, and we just pray that they would reach out to you and that, Lord, you would be their help and strength in this time of trouble, God, and that you'd just come there in your presence and minister to them for your glory and be with every family that couldn't be with us this morning and across the, uh, the, 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 the vi videos that's going out into homes and touching lives and Facebook, we pray you would just minister to every home and life as they're watching this today and the worship and the word would penetrate their hearts and good things would happen for the glory of God and we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. There will not be prayer meeting because of the business meeting tonight, but uh, we want to encourage everyone to stay after the service for that. Usually we have a big potluck dinner, but because of the COVID, we're just going to go right into the uh, service, uh, into the business meeting, and uh, it'll be a little different day today for us, but I believe it's going to be a good day, and we're excited about it. God bless you. Let's get in. Let's worship the Lord. And uh, Oh, I have a little card here from Terry uh, that I haven't forgot, uh, and uh, we love lost Sister Clay here a few weeks ago, and it was a, a, a tragic. She'd been a member of this church and uh, a part of this family for so many years, and uh, I appreciate the church and all that they did while uh, she, they were going through this crisis with Sister Clay and her lost life, but Terry gave me this card to read to you a couple weeks ago, and it says, thank you all. We deeply appreciate it and are gratefully acknowledge your kind expressions of sympathy. Also, all who provided food on that day of the funeral and the beautiful flowers from the church. It will always be remembered by the family, Terry and Penny Clay and Dennis and Alita Clay. And, and it was our joy to minister to them and will forever, ever remember Sister Clay. Amen. Not, I don't know of anybody that had a sweeter spirit in this church than that woman did. And uh, I know she's faced that glorious day and entered into the very presence of the Lord. When she breathed her last breath here, the next breath was a celestial breath in the presence of God. And what a reward she had. Amen. God bless you all. Why don't you just stand on your feet and we'll get back into worship today. I know, we're doing a little up and down here today. <laughs> Lost, but he brought me 
walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall but you have never failed me yet waiting for change to come Knowing the battles won, for you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your.
your faithfulness still in your hands this is my confidence you never failed me your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your trust in and you have never and can never fail us. Lord, we thank you for the years you've blessed Bethel. God, you've kept us for 85 years. We have flourished Lord here in East Alton and you've brought many in. The lives have been changed time after time, year after year. And Lord, we thank you that even in this last year of all the tested trials we've been through, you have been faithful to Bethel and you have kept us, God, and blessed us. And Lord, we thank you that we can still flourish in the house of the Lord. God, enjoy your presence and know that you're here with us and that we can never fail because you can never fail. And we are your children, and we praise you for that this morning. We ask you to bless this service. Lord, bless the word of God as it goes forth this morning. God, bless the after service with our annual business meeting pray that your Holy Spirit would lead us and bless each one that's here. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone said, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, worship leaders and uh, team here. They've done a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful worship service this morning. Amen. I wish it could have gone on and on. It never fails when uh, we're having to rush through things. And I said I'd be done by 11 o'clock, so I got five minutes to preach a message. How many here believe in miracles? Woo! Hallelujah. Well, you're going to have to have one this morning if that's going to be done by 11 o'clock. Uh, but uh, anyways, I, I would rather worship the Lord and go a little later into the service anyways. Turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And uh, the thought of my heart is, is it well? Is it well with my church? So what I've been asking myself uh, in, in this, this, thinking about our annual uh, our theme that we're going to have, well done, well done. And I thought, Lord, if, it's going to be, if we're going to be well done and hear well done, we better be well in the house of the Lord. Amen? And uh, I, it's God's original ju- uh, uh, design that he gave to us in the book of Acts that shows us what a healthy church looks like what a well church looks like. And uh, I know that (laughs) after 21 days of fasting and prayer and and a lot of work too, we've been doing a lot of work at my place, but uh, in all of it, I've never felt so 
strong. I've never felt so clean. I've not had stomach problems. I've not had any, uh, hardly any headaches at all through these 21 days and just a strength that didn't come from myself. And I feel healthier today uh, than when I started 21 days ago, a lot healthier. And if you've been fasting anything this, this 21 days and drawing close to God, I believe how many here feel a little bit healthier? You feel a little bit stronger physically, and then uh, not only that, how many feel closer to the Lord? Raise your hand. After 21 days, and uh, I think this is wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, a time of the year for me. I always look forward to it, and I hate to see it coming to an end, but I've committed that to just spend a year of fasting and prayer, a year of just abstaining from certain things that I know hinder my body and draw me closer to the Lord. And uh, God's been good to, to our church, he kept us all these years. And uh, even through this pandemic, what all God has brought forth for us, and I have so much to be grateful for. And uh, in the book of Acts, it shows us four qualities of a church that is well. So that when God looks down, he can say, well done, well done, well done. And I want to look at those quickly this morning in Acts 2, 42. Let's start right there, okay? And it says this, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread with ho from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, and having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily, so such as should be saved. Time to take off my coat and preach a while. Amen. I got two minutes. No, I got a little bit more than that. I, I have to, I'll just have to take, uh, take, take my extra minutes here uh, that uh, we had in worship and add it to my sermon. But I trust the Lord is going to help us get through this this morning. And so my thought, my scriptures, uh, my outline is taken from the letters well. W E. L L well everyone say well and a church that is well is a church uh, that is worship it's a worshiping church and not only a worshiping church that's the w it's an evangelizing church that's an e and then l stands for a learning church and then we're going to see that also a healthy church is a loving church so a worshiping evangelizing learning loving church. And so we want to carry this theme in our minds through the whole year. I want to be well. Amen. And so be thinking about this because I know when God looks down, he wants to see a healthy church. He wants to see a church that's spiritual and that is being used of him for his glory. And as your pastor, I don't know if anything that makes, brings greater joy to my life than seeing you flourish and seeing you well and seeing you do the will of God with your life. And so I'm happy uh, to share with you this message. And this is what makes us well. Examine your own life. Be your own doctor. Let God check you out. And Lord, be able to expose any weakness, any area in your life that's not well. And may God help you to work on that area of your life so that through this year, you can be well spiritually for the glory of God. Amen? So it's a worshiping church. In 46, 47b, and 43, it says this, And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God. In verse 43 it says, And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. The early church was built upon prayer and worship. Amen? And uh, when you read the book of Acts, the record of the early church history, we conclude that the believers had miracles happen almost every day in their life, but they didn't follow after the signs and the wonders. The signs and the wonders and the miracles followed them because they were well with God. Automatically, marvelous things happened in their lives and in the life of the church, and God did great things. And so many times we follow after signs and wonders. No, let's 
fo- the signs follow those. Hallelujah. Follow those. These signs shall follow them, Mark tells us. And certainly, we should be allowing the signs of God. So we know that God is blessing us. We know that we are well when we see God doing great things in our midst. Amen. And so this year, let's look for great things to happen at Bethel. Amen. Let's expect great things. And let's just reach out and believe that God can do anything. And the Bible, Jesus said, if you're worshiping me, you should be worshiping in spirit and in truth. So Bethel is just a place where we come to worship. But when we enter in this building, we need to be worshiping in spirit and in truth. That means with our mind and with our heart. When we enter in, we should be with our whole being, desiring to bring pleasure and glory to our God and to let him know he means more to us than anything else in the entire world. We can't have any other gods before him. And when we enter in, we should enter in praising God and worshiping him and not being ashamed of our God or afraid, hallelujah, to exalt his name, amen? And so we come, we're Pentecostal, we believe in clapping our hands, uh, we believe in raising our hands, we believe in worshiping the Lord, we believe in shouting amen in the house of the Lord, we believe in giving God the praise and not being ashamed and just entering in with our whole heart, with our whole mind and opening up to God and letting him know he is everything to us. A worshiping church is a church uh, that exalts God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Not only that, we a church that's healthy is an evangelizing church. It's, uh, the Bible says there that they added to the church daily. Everyone say daily. Such as should be saved. Not weekly, not yearly. Daily added to the church. And uh, I know, as I look down on Bethel, we are, not, we are not where we need to be in God. And we thank God we've added a few numbers to our church this year, but we've also lost a few. And all of this just makes us become stagnant if there's no growth. If you've got a baby and the baby's not growing, something is wrong. And a lot of people believe in just, it's all about the body and the body of believers, and that's a bunch of hogwash. It's not about that. Jesus said, I want you to know right now, it's about a world that's going to hell, and we need to be healthy so that we can reach out and touch the world, and we should be, this should be just a part of our very being. Evangelism is not just a program. We had that last year where we went out door to door and reached over 5,000 homes uh, uh, with the gospel and sharing tracts and everything. That's wonderful, but that's not evangelism uh, alone. Evangelism should be something that we are doing every day of our life in our community, with our neighbors, at our businesses, wherever we work, wherever we're going, wherever, whoever we're meeting, it should be just a part of our being to share Jesus Christ. And a healthy church is doing that. They take advantage of every opportunity to give out a track or give out a penny or to let somebody know about Jesus Christ. And I praise God. Uh, I've been in the presence so many uh, that the, the first thing we was reaching was with Ken. We was at the hospital and I forgot to bring my pennies uh, with me. And he had a penny and he's giving out his pennies over there at the hospital and it blesses my heart. I love it when Jerry whips out those pennies and show, shows them to somebody and tells them about Jesus Christ and how that he is the one sent uh, to save the world from their sin. And we, everyone should be, in this body that says they're a part of this church, should become an evangelist that is sharing the gospel, the good news with whosoever will. Amen. That's what that E stands for. Say E. e. Evangelize. I want to be an evangelist for the Lord, just sharing what God has done. L, learning, a learning church. The Bible says in verse 42 of Acts, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship. It is essential for a church to be committed to the study of God's word, committed to the church to be, to hear, to hear the Word of God on a Sunday morning especially, to be involved in the Wednesday night Bible studies, and to be involved in every aspect where we're teaching and reaching out and sharing the Word of God. We have special classes going on to help you understand the Word of God, and we will ask you to continue in this like the early church steadfastly every week, every opportunity to learn and to grow, and beyond that, every 
one of us should be learners, disciples, followers of Jesus Christ, ever learning about the truth, about who he is and what he has done for us and living our lives for him and be ever day learning more and more and more about him. That's why it's so important to have daily reading of the Word of God. It should be every member here this morning ought to have a desire to read the Bible through every year, to read the Bible through. How many here have ever read the Bible all the way through? From beginning to end. Look at the hands. Amen. And I've encouraged that for years, but there's still some that are struggling to read through the Bible. I thought, my, my, my. It shouldn't be a struggle. That should be something that you spread through, something that is an excitement for you. And every year I have a reading program where I read through the Bible at least once and, and fill myself. And you know that I encourage that. I'll encourage it to the day I die because this is the meat that God gives to us to help us grow and learn about Him. And if you don't read this book, you'll never never know God like God wants you to know him. That's why this book has been preserved by the power of God down through the ages, Tim, because God has, knows that this is the most important book in your life. And if you're spending time in anything more than this, then you're spending it in the wrong place because you need to be filling yourself with the word of God. God. They were attentive, the early church, uh, uh, to searching the scriptures in Berea. They searched the scriptures daily, seeking to know more about God. And they were steadfast in the word. And Paul admonished young Timothy. And when he got saved uh, and later on became, went into ministry, he said, Timothy, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. And we need to develop an appetite for the word of God. Amen. Because that's what's going to strengthen us and help us to follow him. And I thank God. When I first got saved, God placed in my heart a love for this book. And I've been reading it and reading it and studying it and memorizing it down through the ages. And uh, I'll tell you what, that's what you say when you're reaching uh, almost 70. It's the ages now. Hallelujah. And uh, we're moving into the, the last ages of our life. But I tell you what, I have more of a hunger for this word than ever before in my life, and I love to read it. I love to pray it. I love to read it to God out loud. I just love this word, and I want to encourage you this year, this year, get into the, into the word of God. It'll make you well. Let the word of God speak to you, and then you'll be able to speak to God in clarity and in truth, and God will bless you. Amen. And last of all, it was a loving church, a loving church. It says in verse 44, of chapter 2, and all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. In Acts 2, 40, verse 46, it says, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And this certainly uh, describes the early church. And it's talking, talking here about social utopia, like it's preached from Washington, which we'll never, ever have, because I got news for you. Our politicians are always going to be richer than you. And when you don't have, I guarantee you, they will have. You know how I know that? Because they vote on their own salary increase. Wouldn't you like to have that opportunity to vote on your salary increase? Huh? Wouldn't that be something? And I'd like to be able to tell my board, I've got enough. I don't need an increase. I've never seen that happen in Washington yet. I, the only time I ever heard that happen was when a President Trump said, I'm not taking a, a salary for the whole year. I'm going to, a whole four years, he never took a salary. Saved us several million dollars. You just don't hear of that nowadays. Anybody turning down an offer to make some money. And uh, I know he's a billionaire, so he doesn't need it. But I've seen, how many know that money never satisfies? And the more you get, the less satisfied you are. And so if you think that money's going to satisfy you, I've got news for you. It's not about money. It's about having happiness and peace with God. And uh, that's what really counts. And a loving church doesn't seek after those things that they can get for themselves. They seek after ways they can give to others. Amen. And we know we're healthy when we're thinking more about others than we are thinking about ourselves. We know we're healthy and well in our spirit when love just permeates out of our lives to reaching other people for the glory of God and just loving them. And, and the church expanded. It exploded because people seen something different in them. They weren't selfish. They weren't greedy. They weren't boastful. They, they were just a loving people that loved to be with one another and loved to, to reach out and touch lives. And you see it all through the scriptures in the life of Jesus. 
Jesus. And then in the early church, just reaching out, going to anyone and everyone and showing the love of God and, and touching lives. And here's Paul in prison and Silas. And remember the earthquake and the jailer uh, that, that uh, uh, got scared to death was going to take a sword, sword and kill himself because all the prisoners were going to shake because of the earthquake and all the doors were open. And Paul stops everything and says, don't, don't, don't kill yourself. And reached out to the very man that had him in prison that probably had taken part in his lashings and beatings and begged the man, don't kill yourself, and loved that man in that situation. That man got saved in his entire family in one of the most difficult uh, 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 experiences in the Bible. And we see Paul turning it into something, instead of trying to escape, he used that experience to bring people to Christ. And that's, you see, they're all the way through the Scriptures. Why? They were always thinking about others. And a real well church is a church that is loving one another and loving a world that's going to loss. And uh, I'm telling you, until that love fills our heart and our life. In fact, Jesus said, continue in my love. Continue in my love. Continue in my word. Continue to follow after me. And when we do, when we do, we're going to be healthy in the things of the Lord. And uh, I want to be well. Do you want to be well? Amen. I remember my father-in-law was near death with cancer, and we walked in the room, and, and, uh, and we, was, we prayed with him, and, and uh, it was so sad. He was at the hospital, and we thought he was going to die very soon. He lived on for several more weeks, uh, but as we was there, Kathy had tears in her eyes, and, and uh, uh, we prayed with him, and then he looked at us. He said, you know, Kate, call my wife Kate, he says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. And he looked us in the eye and he said, would you just sing with me that old hymn, It Is Well, It Is Well With My Soul. And uh, with tears in our eyes, we began to sing. I mean, you turn in your books, if you would, to page 316. We're going to close our message with this song. And uh, I can't think of a more beautiful song than this man wrote, Horatio Spafford, uh, when when he was going through one of the most difficult times of his life, having lost his children, and uh, uh, his wife uh, uh, was just a, a tragedy uh, when all this happened in, in his life. And uh, in the midst of all of this loss, his business, his millions of dollars, and all that he had, he penned these words on an envelope. I've held that envelope in my hand that he wrote this song back in the 1800s. I held it in my hand in Rome, Pennsylvania. And I'll, I'll never forget reading that handwritten lyrics to this wonderful song, It Is Well With My Soul. I wonder if we could all stand in honor of our God and make this our prayer that when this year is over, we'll be able to say, it is well with my soul. Amen. And not just this year, but this rest of your life to be able to sing, it is well with my soul. And with this, we want to end the service. And we trust these words will become your life. And you'll begin to live this year like never before, saying, Lord, is it well with me? Is it well with our church? Is it well with our pastor? And that we be in prayer one for another, loving one another, and worshiping together, evangelizing together, learning together, and loving together till Jesus comes. Amen. Let's sing this wonderful old hymn. Thank you.